Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Cool little topic video today, time under tension. Is it the key to growth or a pointless diversion? Let's get pointlessly intellectual about our leisure activity of weight training. Love it. Couple of things on the agenda today. First of all, what is time under tension, AKA TUT? Who supports time under tension and who detracts from it? How is it related to hypertrophy? Does it have any limits in its application? How do we approach it from the real world and what does that imply for actual training? So first up, what is TUT? Time under tension, acronym there. And more precisely, more scientifically, it's time spent generating a certain average tension by the target muscle in an exercise. Like So if your biceps do this, for like 30 seconds and the average tension here is 20 pounds, then it's, you know, 20 pounds uh, on, you know, of tension uh, and the time is, you know, whatever, 30 seconds. So 20 pounds of tension, 30 seconds of time, time spent generating tension or time under tension, right? So in order to measure it directly, you need to know a couple things. You'd have to know load used, that's easy, you know, waste you're lifting. But you'd also have to time your sets, not between your sets, but within your sets. That's a little tough, right? You can sort of be done if you have a training partner and they do a stopwatch. But uh, even if you run your own stopwatch, it's kind of like you start it and then you go set up under the squat rack, you do stuff and then you stop. And then if you take any kind of breaks, like you sort of have to realign your technique and wiggle out your hips and then do more squats, like that doesn't really count because your quads weren't really contracting because your knees were locked out. That gets a little bit more complicated. Not as easy to do. Who supports time under tension? It's been in and out of the spotlight in uh, hypertrophy circles bodybuilding as a training method uh, quite a lot. So in TUT training, you do reps with a given load for a given amount of time, uh, and you don't necessarily count the reps, you just count the amount of time, okay? So you'd say I did, a, you know, I lifted 60 pounds in this exercise for a minute straight or something like that. Well, it's very possible, right? And in order to progress, you might increase the load or increase the time spent lifting it. So you do 60 pounds for a minute. Next week, I do 60 pounds for a minute and 10 seconds. Or next week, I do 65 pounds for the same minute or something like that. Um, and a lot of bodybuilders over the years have supported the idea of TUT uh, without even really counting time. Very few people count the time. Um, a lot of times when they're doing, you know, uh, partial reps, or unique exercises, which are really very tough to track as far as loading and progression, uh, they'll say, well, it's all about time under tension. Who cares about all this you know, science shit anyway, or, or progression shit, uh, which a lot of times means their range of motion, their cadence, uh, or their load is just really unusual for hypertrophy training. So for example, they're using really lightweight and someone's like, why are you using lightweight? That doesn't work. They say, well, it's all our time under tension, right? So I had a lot of time. The tension isn't a big deal because, you know, the two factors carry uh, off each other or say, you're not doing full range of motion. They'll say, well, you know, it's all about time under tension anyway. So even if I do partials, I still spend time uh, tensing that muscle. Same idea. Range of motion doesn't matter as much or at all, whatever they would say. Cadence, you know, would say like, hey, I use less weight today and I did, uh, you know, slow eccentrics. And people would be like, well, why are you using less weight? Be like, well, I did the slow eccentric, so it's more time and it's less weight. So it could be explained something like that. Not entirely unreasonable. So how is time and retention actually related to hypertrophy in the true sort of empirical sense? Well, fundamentally, muscle fibers grow from their own imposition of tension onto other structures. So their generation of tension is what grows them fundamentally, mostly, right? This leads them to activate, right? The tension uh, is created by their activation, their contraction, uh, and that generates metabolites and gives them a pump. And all of this stuff, everything from activation to contraction to metabolites to the pump, all leads to growth. So it's all really good things. So uh, if sets are taken close to failure, that's our first caveat there, uh, if the tension is high, the time is going to be short, and then the faster fibers get most of the work. Sweet. If you're doing lighter weight training, so like 75% of 1RM is the heavier stuff uh, or above, if you do something like between 30 and 75% 1RM or closer to 30% 1RM, the tension is relatively low, but the time spent under it is high. Like a set of pull downs of 30 reps takes way longer than one for 10. And then it sort of balances out and you get the same amount of hypertrophy, which is actually corroborated by the direct studies that high reps and low reps get you roughly the same hypertrophy. So sort of good news here. Um, and then if the tension is much lower than 30%, most of the slower fibers get the stimulus, which they do grow, but they're the very small threshold uh, motor units. So they have very few fibers and they're very small slow twitch fibers. So even if they grow, it's not 
very notable and you don't get optimal gains, which is why training less than 30%, even if it's a lot of time, it's not enough tension to meet that minimum basic threshold uh, of lots of growth and doesn't happen. Because you could say a, a potential, not so genuine critique of time and retention could be like, well, you know, marathon runners, um, they spend a shitload of time with very little tension. Shouldn't that balance out? Shouldn't they be jacked? Well, the answer is no, because there could be some minimum threshold tension. In fact, there is one that doesn't really activate the faster fibers. Uh, at all, probably doesn't lead to a whole lot of growth. So noted, um, and you know, because when training close to failure, um, if that's taken as a reality, like we say, okay, everything goes close to failure, then time spent generating tension is really what signals growth. In that case, TUT, your time under tension, is central to the growth process, right? So if we say, because it really is time spent generating tension that does cause growth. So if we say something like TUT doesn't matter, which some folks have said before, they're really just fundamentally incorrect. Um, it matters at the core, it really does, but there are limits to how it matters, and especially if it's real world applicable. So what are those limits? Well, tension, first of all, doesn't specify a range of motion. Right. If you just do pure isometric and just push against the bar super hard and then you relax, uh, yeah, you generate attention for a certain amount of time. You should get a lot of growth. Except pure isometrics don't lead to nearly as much growth as uh, concentric and eccentric phase. Right. So that's a problem. And these are the first two points are related. The second point is tension doesn't specify contraction type, concentric, eccentric, and isometric. Well, if isometric only, that really kind of sucks. And also range of motion by itself, like if you just do an isometric, you get a decent growth in that sort of range, but the best growth is if you go all the way down and all the way up, right? So someone could say, oh, well, time under tension is great, and then do these little bullshit half reps, but it's all of a sudden not that great, right? And if they do only concentric, and lift up and throw something down, lift the weight up and throw something down and say, well, I've got crazy time under tension. Like, yeah, but you're missing the eccentric contraction, which is really also super critical to maximizing growth. So all of a sudden we have two points against it. You can justify, you know, tension doesn't specify ROM, so you can really screw that up with short ranges of motion or no range of motion at all. You can screw it up by doing isometrics or only concentric only, and you miss out on uh, the eccentrics or concentrics or whatever you're not doing to gain the most size. It doesn't specify failure proximity. So you could, you do, you take your 50, 15 or 20 RM weight, 20 RM weight, and you do sets of 10 with it. You do five sets of 10. It's a lot of tension, 20 RM is decent. Five sets of 10 is good. That's like the same thing as like two and let's say you do six sets of 10. That's the same amount of time under tension as three sets of 20. But three sets of 20 is super fucking close to failure. It's not even sure you can do that. You might be like 22, 20, and 18 or something, right? But if you stop at 10 every single time, your failure proximity is so low, you're so far away from failure that each of those sets doesn't ever add up to those three sets of 20. Those six sets of 10 never do add up and you get way lower hypertrophy, even though mathematically, so well, hold on a second, my time under tension was literally identical. I mean, it's 60 total reps, right? How the hell does that work? Well, because time under tension has these limits, if the close to failure condition isn't applied, right? And lastly, uh, time is much tougher to measure in the real world than number of reps. Okay, when you do squats, you do 20 reps, you know you did 20 reps, everybody can count, I hope, right? But like if you measure time, I mean, again, if you lock your knees out or not, you have to set a timer every time, Jeez, that's a lot of work where reps might be able to do that for us, right? So there's no stopping someone if they really invest in TUT and they think, okay, TUT isn't the core of growth at limits, it is the way to train with no exceptions, they could end up doing super short range of motion dumbbell presses, like sub-maximally, so they stop at 10 even though they could have done 20 and they just do a lot of sets and they could say like, TUT bro, I'm growing like crazy, but they would be missing out on a ton of results. So TUT is not enough. In the real world, TUT can be great so long as you do a couple of things. You do concentric, isometric, and eccentric phases in most of your training, like actual reps, okay? You do an appropriate high or rather full range of motion, check, two check marks. You train at three reps in reserve or fewer in most cases, sweet, close to failure, check again. And you can gauge the amount of time actually applied accurately in a real world setting. Well, we talked about setting the alarm clock system or the stopwatch is kind of annoying, so what solves all of these problems and the time component is counting normal reps achieved and not worrying about time at all. Because look, if you're worrying about time under tension, you did 15 reps last week. If you do 20 reps this week, that's for sure more time under tension unless you're wildly changing the cadence of the reps. 
But if you're wildly changing the cadence of the reps, you went faster now, it's actually higher forces, more tension, and that tends to balance out. So if you just train closer to failure and you progressively move up in reps or progressively move up in load, all of these problems are solved. You're still getting all the TUT that you're supposed to be. You're checking every time in our tension box, but you're also checking the boxes of making sure to get the different muscle contraction types, concentric, eccentric, isometric. You're making sure to get the full range of motion and you're making sure to go close to failure. And by counting reps, you have a real good way to regulate how much time and tension is actually being applied in the real world, right? So what are the implications here? Well, sets of good technique reps close to failure accomplish pretty much everything we need out of our training, that's awesome. They work because they supply time under tension, but in the ways that check all the other boxes of training, such as range of motion, such as RIR, such as a different concentric, uh, eccentric, isometric contraction type, so on and so forth. So while the concept of train, uh, time under tension is valid, the application of TUT is best done just by standardizing your technique to a good technique with a full range of motion, counting the load, the reps and the sets. And automatically TUT results as being a box that's checked, but you do it in a way that's very realistic, very world, and checks all the other boxes we need to from training. So when someone asks you on Instagram or something, hey, like, what do you think about TUT training? You can feel free to tell them that you use it. But you can also say the way I do it is I do it the right way by just counting the reps and properly executed sets. That's it. Folks, hopefully you got something out of that. See you next time for the next super informational video.